Hey, what's up guys? Uh, this is 3D10 here and welcome back to the channel. Previously, we modeled Captain America's shield. So in this video, we'll be adding some materials to the shield to look as close to the shield as we'll, we'll make it as uh, look as close as possible to the re, uh, to the Captain America to Captain America's shield. So, let's get into it. So, in the movie, we can see Captain Mer Captain America's shield is made from vibranium. So the closest metal I could find was a mix of silver and brushed comb, chrome. So let's create a new material. Uh, I'll name it vibranium. All right. So to do uh, to create, uh, so we'll just go to the. We'll click on our captain, uh, our mesh, and then go to the materials tab here. And then press new. All right, and we can uh, rename it uh, dou by double clicking. Oh, sorry. Actually, let me just turn on my screencast keys. All right. So once we double click, and we can type in vibranium. All right. So before Captain America's shield was painted, it was a complete gray. So this is the pure vibranium material we'll be creating. All right. So to go into the node editor, which is where we're going to be creating our material. We can go uh, move our uh, air, uh, our m m a cursor to the top right, and you'll see a crossbow. Uh, when you see the crossbow, click on it, and you can you'll be able to split the screen. Right now, we are in the three D viewport, and if you go to the top left, you can change it. And we want to go into shader editor. All right. So the vibe. So any metal is a hundred percent gloss. So we won't be using the principled BSDF, even though it has uh, some uh, some of the inputs we want. It, other inputs might uh, will mess it up. So we'll just uh, go ahead and delete the uh, principled BSDF. So uh, after saying that, we won't be also we won't be using the glossy shader as well. Uh, so we'll be using this shader called the anisotropic shader. This shader is uh, com. It will is just like the glossy shader, but it's you can specify the direction of the light uh, in which and let's say a light is reflecting on this mesh. So I'm just gonna create a quick mesh here and G just move it to the side and just uh, don't do what I'm doing here. I'm just going to add an emission to it. And then create another material. Alright, and just going to add a new material and uh, take this out. So the anisotropic shader is a very simple shader. Uh, it's big, uh, big fancy name, but it's it isn't much. Uh, so, oh, to you, uh, I forgot to mention that to use this shader, you have to be in the cycles and re render engine. So this is kind of an old render engine. So they uh, Blender created a new one called EV, which is the default. So we want to change it to cycles because we can only access this shader in the cycles render. Also, change your device, uh, your. D, uh, device to CP, uh, GPU compute. All right, so I'll just show you this shader quickly. So it's basically like the glossy shader. There's a color input and there's a roughness input, but there's also four other inputs, which, uh, three other inputs which we which we will be using. So I'll just quickly show you. Now you can see we specified the. We just gonna change. I'm just gonna change this up. So now you can see, we can tell. Uh, so this light here, uh, this light we were you, we're using, we're specifying how much, what type of light we, uh, what ti what direction we want the light to uh, sh sh reflect on the on our mesh. So right now it's at the default, which is called radio, and we'll be using that default. And we can also change some other stuff, which can. Kind of, as you can see, it'll change the how you want the reflection to be. Anyway, um, I'm just gonna delete these two quickly. 
Alright. So now let's get into this shield. So as I've said, go into render uh cycles render and add in the anisotropic sh BSDF. Sorry. Alright, we can connect this input to the surface. So we'll be manually tweaking two of these two inputs here, the anisotropy and the rotation. So I found that for the anisotropy, 0 0.75 works the best as we want it, the shield from an angle, it'll look really good. And same with the, uh, ro for the rotation, uh, rotation we want it to be at 0 0.608. All right. So now we can leave the rotation uh, r roughness as it is. It's good enough. All right, so we're gonna start out with we're gonna start chain uh, making the color first. So I found this article and he was talking about uh, the some of the art the RGB colors for uh, many metals, and I found that if we create a First, we want to add a mix RGB node in, connect it to the color, and so we want to add a RGB node, sorry, RGB node, and then press Control G, so we'll create our own node group. This is completely optional, but I felt like this works, this makes it really easy, uh, easier for, no, yeah, it's easier for us to uh, create the paint on the shield all right so now as i've been saying i found this article and it uh i took the rgb values for the silver and the the values which i found which looked really nice were keeping the r at 0 0.5 and changing g and b to 0 0.456 just a very slight change but it looks really good all right, so if we go into uh, rendered view, we won't see anything right now. It's because we don't have any light. So without any light, it's just complete darkness. So what we're gonna do is add in a light and sun lamp. And now you can already see this anisotropy shader giving it that Captain America look. So we're just gonna move this uh, light up and go to the lights tab and change the strength to 10. All right, go back to our mesh and let's continue on with our color. So since we are we created the node group and we can take our input and connect it to the color one. So the reason I used a mix RGB is because we aren't just creating the silver color. We need to add something called Fresnel. And what Fresnel does is it basically takes your color. And since metal is, you absolutely need Fresnel because Fresnel, uh, I thought at first Fresnel wasn't needed because it's just, Fresnel is basically just gloss, it's just adding extra gloss. So, but when you add, and what's the point of adding gloss to gloss, right? But I found out that the Fresnel node if we add some other inputs, we can we can create something which will have a very subtle effect on our metal. So this effect would be it'll take so since metal absorbs a lot of uh, a lot of your light, so and it, that light will go to the edges. So near our these rims here, it'll become the color will become a lighter version of this silver. So it just looks good, um, and uh, yeah, it, sometimes it'll actually, it, it it's actually really necessary because in some parts it'll actually completely mess up the look of the reflection. So anyway, just connect this FAC to the FAC on the mix uh, RGB, and we're just going to add another mix RGB node and connect it to the normal. And also add in a bump note. 
and a geometry node. Uh, since we don't want all these, we can just click on the geometry node and just press Control H. It'll just hide everything. All right. So what this does is very subtle. I'm not even sure if you can see, but it's basically the normal Fresnel, but without any of this additional nodes, we won't be controlling how much Fresnel we want on this uh, on our rims. So we can say no Fresnel at all or all, all, a lot of Fresnel. So that's what we're trying to uh, change here. So right now, 0 0.5 is, actually 0 0.4 would look good. Very subtle, I'm not sure if you can see, but yeah. Anyway, uh, now we got our color, we're just going to now add the normal. So as I've said, this vibranium material we're creating is going to be a mix of silver and brush chrome. So in our normal, we're gonna create that brushed effect. All right, so we can select, just uh, uh, we'll have this box select and just select all everything which is connected to this color node. So we're just gonna move that up because we want some space to work with. All right, for the normal, we're just going to first add a bump node connect this normal input to the normal. And then we're going to add a noise texture. So what this noise texture would, I'm just gonna connect it here. So it'll be something like this. And um, it doesn't exactly look like that brushed chrome effect. So what we're going to be using is, we're going to add a mapping node, connect the vector to the vector and add a texture coordinate. Take the generated into vector. All right, so now if we, right now it's just at the normal uh, noise texture, but if we take this Y scale and add it and make this number 100, you can see some sort of brush if brushed effect coming. And if we take this number and change it to 10, It'll create even more brush effect. And take the dis uh, distortion and change it at 10, and it'll create that complete brushed effect. And it looks really nice uh, when the when we create the material. So now I'm just gonna add, uh, take this color, and uh, put it into height. So right now it looks really grainy, and uh, this is another problem with cycles. Um, but it's also a problem with our no, uh, our normal uh, our noise texture uh, bump node because we do not want the string to be a, a one S because it will look really grainy and even if it didn't look grainy it'll look really bad because what this height is doing is it's adding that extra height in where the places are darker so. So you're gonna take this strength and put uh, put it to 0 0.05, and now you can see we created that vibranium look. And so just one last thing, uh, this is completely uh, optional, and uh, I just wanted to do this because I just uh, I just want to make sure that there's something here. So I'll just add a tangent node, and this will go into our last input here. And it's, it's our, set as our default. So, and then just add it to the tangent. So it'll just complete that look. There's, it's basically, well, with, even without it, there's nothing, nothing wrong with it, but I just felt like uh, I wanted it there. So it's completely optional. You do not have to add it. All right, so we've created the uh, basic vibranium uh, shield look. So now we're just going to add the paint, and then we'll be done with our shield. So to create this paint, we're going to take our vibranium here. We're gonna add a new material, uh, and copy and paste all of this. So it is box select, Control C, and Control. Oh, we don't actually don't need this, so we can just Control V. And this is why I said the node group will really be helpful here. So if we pre click this and go into our node group, which is just tab, sorry. All right. 
uh, you can, uh, we want to control C and control V, and new RGB node, and we'll take this and put it at dark, uh, red. So we don't want it completely a bright red, we want it to be a bit darker, and that makes it look a way more realistic. So maybe about here would be good. And you can see this kind of circle, which doesn't, it's not the same here. And that's because we have not, it's like saying, if you want to attach another input, uh, you can put it here, uh, attach something here. So we're just gonna take this and attach it here. So now you can see there's another one. So it's more like our other option if you see in Google form. Uh, so now we have this second option. So this is what we're going to take out our first color, which is the silver vibranium. And if we connect it in here, it should create a red, a, a red paint. And if we go into uh, back into our 3D viewport and go into edit mode, if we select our two s rings which have the uh, red paint on them, and if we go to the r uh, right, we will see a sign. If you click on that, and now you can see that we have uh, added the red paint to our shield. So it's looking real nice, but we're, we're just going to have to add the blue in this area. Uh, so to do that, it's basically the same thing. We'll take this, uh, copy, add a new, new material, delete, which is just X, control V, and go into our node group and add another one of our RGB nodes and change this to blue. Uh, we don't want it to go into our uh, the blue purple side. We want it to go a bit more into our light blue turquoise to blue and change, take this down a bit more. All right, so now we can connect it to the same place. Connected it here before. Uh, just to look neat, I'm just gonna move this down here. All right, so we have basically finished it so let's just connect this our last our blue paint to the color one go into edit mode uh select each of these face faces and press assign all right and you have completed the captain america shield so i hope you enjoyed this video uh please if you did uh hit that like button and subscribe uh, so thank you for watching my video and I'll get I'll see you guys in the next one